What's going on Minecraft fans, Luke the Notable here. In this video, I'll be surviving 200 days in hardcore Minecraft. The first 100 days can be watched here, just click the card on screen. But now it's time for day 101. So here we are, back to the only reality that matters in day 101. The entire compound's the same from the first 100 days, complete with creeper collection. But of course in these 100 days, we're gonna have to get right to work. We have some serious objectives. I really didn't ask too much of myself on the first 100 days, the only objective was to not die. But now with most of my infrastructure set up, it's pretty easy to survive, so I'm setting my my sights a little bit higher. Mark my words, by the end of this 200 days, the Ender Dragon will be killed and I will have beaten Minecraft. But until then, we gotta do some farming. Well, farming, mining, exploring, killing, tons of stuff. It's gonna be a great 100 days. And here it looks like day 101's just about over. Very productive, but still a lot more to do. Day 102 began with the clearing of more land. I need to make tons of space for a farm. Using only carrots, I can employ this entire town for their entire life. They're not very smart. I have the carrots, so I make the laws. I worked all day again. Only 98 more days until my date with the Ender Dragon. Sorry, still working on the farm, but if anything, it should show you how important it is. However, no farm is complete without a wall to surround it. Yep, I'm gonna build a giant wall again. I honestly think it's one of the only reasons I'm still alive. I doubt this one will have three different layers, but one good stone one is all you need. For now, the villagers are safe inside of the well, but I'll never feel safe until I have a completed wall, so I went to bed early again. But day 104, we're back at it, building the most important structure in my entire town. I think I've survived so long because I try to take those extra safety steps, like wall building. Sure, it might take a while, but once this wall is set up, I'll feel a lot better hanging out in this town. And this time at night, instead of sleeping, I just stood perfectly still in one spot so my crops could grow. I am dead set on finishing this wall before I do anything else. I'm gonna spend a lot of time in this town. Can't have creepers creeping up on me. Construction was going pretty good until I ran into this hilly portion of the villager town. I'll get through it, but it was definitely easier to build walls on flat land. And again, I chewed up all of day 105 just constructing my wall. Time well spent. It's a little better, but you can tell there's tons of dark spots throughout this entire town. Still pretty dangerous. But you know, these crops are looking mighty scrumptious. Day 106, I heard some nagging zombies underneath the town, so I figured I'd go check it out. There's basically a small cave system underneath this town, and that allows zombies to spawn. I guess in theory they don't really hurt anyone, but I should probably get rid of these mobs anyway. Like my frog from second grade, I'll cover it with dirt and pretend it doesn't exist. And then there was nothing else better to do, so I just worked on some more wall. By this point, I'd say about 70% of it's done, so zombies can still get in, but they can only come in from one angle, so it's pretty easy to defend. And for day 107, I could show you another full day of wall construction, but I doubt you want to see that by this point. So we can skip to the sunset and a completed wall. But the real test will be at night. I'm looking for any dark spots and I'm gonna fill them with light. But I'm pretty good at building walls and securing areas, so I really didn't run into any problems tonight. No mob spawns in the town this time. So in the morning of day 108, I figured there's nothing better to do than farm. Eventually I'll be able to sell my crops to these villagers, but I've never done this before and I really don't know how the whole system works, so this is gonna take a little bit of figuring out. But until then, nothing will go to waste. I'll just stockpile my crops in this chest. I also need a couple more things back at the main camp, so I'm gonna take my horse road home. And now stocked up on supplies I left at night to make it back to the villagers. It's heavily night time, but thanks to my wall, I can work on my subordinates in peace. I know for an absolute fact that there's probably a better way to do this, but I don't know how to do that, so my way's gonna have to work. And now it's technically the next day, but I was so focused on getting these villagers to work that I actually forgot to stop the recording. So we'll just say day 108 was an extra long day. Whatever. Now it's day 109, and I'm just trying to get these villagers to go in these huts that they'll stay in their entire lives. So far, with my medial knowledge of villager occupations, I was able to get a master farmer and a toolsmith. But remember, I don't know much about the villagers. These green ones are actually called nitwits and can't learn a profession, so I wasted my time on him. However, I wasted no time at night, doing one final check to make sure that everything is covered by light. And hey, the crops are looking scrumptious again. So on the morning of day 110, I went straight to my favorite thing farming. But I won't be selling them this time, I'll be reinvesting to make the farm even larger. And after 10 days, this village is really starting to come together. Look how comfy that guy looks. Hey, it's day 111. I don't know why I'm excited, but I am. Though pretty much immediately, I went back to the main camp. I gotta grab a few more things. One of them was wool. And even though my sheep farm is in violation of several health codes, it still produces. I needed the wool to make beds to make a villager spawner, which of course I've never made before. It pretty much chewed up the entire day, and it never worked. Awesome. And it's not like I didn't try Right, here's day 112. I read all of Google. I even gave them food. They never spawned. Looking back, I'm almost certain it's because the room they're in is too small. Whatever, if you're not gonna breed for me, I guess you'll be imprisoned there for eternity. These villagers weren't a complete waste, though. I was able to get a toolsmith to master, and he'll sell me a diamond pickaxe for 23 emeralds. So now, thanks to my investments, I can basically turn carrots into diamonds. And with how big my farm is over here, that pretty much means I have unlimited diamonds. Sort of. And now on day 113, I'm going into the nether. Gotta keep you on your toes. I really haven't done anything in the nether since the first 
time I came here, and that was pretty brief. But if I'm gonna beat the game, I have to explore the nether, even though I don't want to. Even though I'm in the nether, I'm gonna try to make this as safe as possible, though I'm not gonna cut any corners. It might take a little bit of effort, but I feel the best way to travel through the nether is tunneling. And if I place cobblestone along the floor of the tunnel, nothing should spawn in here. I hope. Your days can get a little weird down in the nether, but now it's day 114 in the real world. And it took a while, but by day 115, I found what I was looking for, the nether fortress. I impishly stepped inside and even found some diamond horse armor. But while getting a lay of the land, I was attacked by a wither skeleton. I bonked him with my shovel and ran away. And I didn't stop running until I made it home. Now it's day 116, at least I think, and I'm gonna redo my nether portal. I didn't change that much, but I figured a portal to the underworld should have some style. But it'll be a little bit before we go back into the nether. It's a very dangerous place and I wanna make sure I'm prepared. So I went back to the village and started construction on my diamond mine. I wanted to keep the exterior simple so it would blend in with the villagers. And I think I did an okay job. This is the part where most YouTubers would have three episodes of their Minecraft series dedicated to mining, but I can just snap it away. Aren't you glad you're watching the best Minecraft series on YouTube? I am. I constructed this mine to find diamonds, and I won't stop until I have enough for some diamond armor. And so far it was going pretty good. By the end of day 118, I had 14 diamonds. You know, I don't normally like to mine with a diamond pickaxe, but because I can buy them from villagers, this time I'm going with it. Then finally on day 120 with this massive chunk of diamonds, I should have enough for some diamond armor. I'm also incredibly lucky none fell in this lava. Not bad, only took me about three days and I've got full diamond armor. I don't have enough experience to enchant the full set, but at this point I'm just looking for one of these items to have some sort of fire protection. So now with some flame resistant boots, I'm back in the nether. One of the first things I did when I got back to the nether fortress is I installed this iron golem. I'm not really sure how helpful he'll be, but it's good peace of mind. I also lucked out and found nether wart and soul sand, both very useful items. But I'm primarily down here because I have to kill blazes. That's what these creatures are. And somehow, I really don't even know how I got this lucky. I found an entire blaze spawn. This is likely the most dangerous situation I've been in in this entire series. Great, I really took my time with this thing. In my wildest dreams, I'd love to have an efficient blaze farm, but I know I'm not good enough for that. Understand that I'm not really sure what I'm doing, but I also have really good diamond enchanted anti-fire armor, so these things can't really hurt me. It took some serious elbow grease to build this thing, but once it was done, I had a nice enclosure with the blaze spawn. The final product isn't very complicated. You can see it's made of mostly dirt, but it does work. Somehow, that all just went perfectly according to plan. When I emerged from the nether, it was nighttime, so I guess we're just gonna call this whole thing day 125. Now those blazes drop blaze rods, which are turned into blaze powder, and then when added with an ender pearl, make an eye of ender, which is part of the end game. The eye of ender will help you find the end fortress, which is where you have to go to beat the ender dragon and beat the game. However, I almost immediately lost one of my eye of ender and burned down this forest in anger. Don't worry, there's about a million more steps to beat Minecraft, and somehow chickens is part of it. I'm not sure how, but it took me 126 days to spawn an iron golem in my compound. There was also one of these traveling traders who showed up and he was gonna sell Nautilus shells. I know they're important for something. Too bad I left all my money in the diamond mine. Gotta go grab that. I didn't want to miss out on this trader, so I went right back and he was still there. Using a heart of the sea and Nautilus shells, I was able to make a conduit. I'm not really sure what it's for, but I know it's important. For now, we're just gonna throw it in the treasure chest though and maybe come back to it if we get to 300 days. You know, one thing I've never really been proud of is my horse road. I know it's a horse road, but it should look a little nice, come on. And while I've never really had any problems with it, it's only a matter of time before a creeper creeps his way on it. So I'm installing some safety features. Yeah, who knows, maybe with enough work, this won't just be a horse road, it could be a people road. I worked all day on this side of the road, and at night, I added more lights to my main compound. You can never have enough. Day 128, I'm out here laboring, cleaning up the hilly portion of my horse road. I know in the past I've said it's not about vanity, but it's totally all about vanity. At night, I ran into an enderman, which is convenient, because they drop ender pearls, and I need those to beat the game. But he didn't drop one. I'm gonna sleep with the villagers for tonight, and then in the morning, I'll work on the horse road from this side. The villager side of the road is just way worse, mostly due to lack of public funding. I'm pretty sure I also built a good portion of it at night frantically, so that's never good. Kinda like that old birch road I spent 20 days on and never used, I'm gonna have this thing carved through the swamp. And by nighttime, I wasn't near done, but at least I can dismantle this old ugly piece of road. I'll have to do a little bit of work here on day 130, but you can obviously tell that this road is much better already. Yeah, the bridge is done, but it definitely doesn't look good on the other side. I guess we can skip to the nighttime of day 131, where it still looks pretty meh. I don't know, there's a lot of work to do here. By day 132, I got the road to a point where it was pretty safe, but I started to run out of walls. So I guess I'll work on the mountain portion of the road then. This is easily the most hazardous section. I've lost a horse here. I kind of installed a big dirt net under the bridge, so if I fall, I'll hit this instead of the ground. And I don't really have too many plans for up on top of the mountain, but I definitely want to put some more lights up here so skeletons don't spawn anymore. I worked until the sun came up. I'm sort of getting tired of it. And I wasn't recording, but now I have a cat, so there's that. You didn't really miss out on much.
much. I pretty much just finished up the horse road. Now I'm gonna start another project right near the villager town. It shouldn't take too long. That is, if this cat wasn't following me. I'm gonna handle this man. I decided to be nice to the little guy and give him his own house. That's more than a lot of the villagers in this town. And I worked on my mystery construction until nighttime, so I should probably go home. I don't really know why I'm pretending this is some secret. I'm just building a simple watchtower near the village. I was hoping that during the nighttime I'd be able to use this thing to fight Enderman. The plan didn't really work, but at least I have an amazing view of the village. And way, way out there in the distance, that might be another villager town. And even though my excitement was at an all-time high, before we do anything, we have to watch the sunrise. It wasn't even really that far of a walk to get to this town. Nice. The first thing I noticed is that this village is doing great. They even have children. Whoa! So the first thing I did, and the first thing you should always do, is lock all of these men in their houses immediately. It's as easy as ringing a bell, and then once the villagers go inside their houses, you lock them in there forever. And it was a long day, but I know all of these villagers are important. I actually care about their lives. But as you can tell, on the morning of day 136, it's obviously pretty dangerous over here, so we're gonna have to do some wall building. Thing is, my inventory's kinda packed right now, and I don't really have a main camp over here. So I'm gonna have to go back and get some supplies, but I don't have to worry about these villagers because they're all imprisoned for eternity. And this is just perfect, my stonks, the dividends! So before we head out on day 137, I'm gonna turn these carrots into emeralds. And I'm really hoping with this clean slate town, I'll be able to do a little bit more with some of the villager professions. One of the things I definitely need is a cleric, and I happen to have two of them. If you level them up high enough, you can buy ender pearls from them, so there's no need to kill endermen. Nice. The cleric's really the only one I care about, but I also happen to have a bunch of blank villagers as well, so I can get tons of different professions. Yeah, we've opened up another can of hard labor on ourselves, but you know, give us maybe 10 days and this thing should look great. Step one is create a farm. If I don't have any food, then I can't tax my citizens. This farm I wanted to not only be functional, but also look a little nice and have a little bit of an automated feature as well. But I don't know how it's already dark. I got like nothing done today. Though I wasted no time on day 139, this farm is really starting to come together. I said I wanted some automated features in this farm as well. It's not gonna be too complicated or anything, but you'll see. However, before I could finish it, my eternal clock, the sun, told me to go to bed. Very early on day 140, I was able to finish up the farm and I was even able to finish up the conveyor belt running underneath it. Now when I harvest these crops, any that fall in the water on either side will be delivered to one simple spot underground and all without redstone. We're also gonna change up our wall building technique. I've got so much dark wood over here, I might as well make fences. It got dark, but now it's the next day. That's generally how it tends to work. Luckily for me, this town is pretty flat, so I was able to lay down a ton of fences in no time. And just like that, I'm about 10,000% more at ease. It's still a lot of area though, despite it being pretty flat, so this might take another day. Yep, just had to throw a couple more touches on the wall in day 142. This town really has seen far less bloodshed than the other one. It might actually turn out to be a good community. I think when this is all said and done, I'll probably build a proper house here, but I don't really have time for that right now. But my hard work's paying off already. My economy is booming. I even persuaded this cleric to sell me some ender pearls, which is really the whole reason I came here. Then at night, on my way back to the first villager town, I upgraded my horse. My other horse was terrible, but I didn't realize until I rode this pixelated steed. And by the morning of day 143, I had basically made it back to the main camp. I'm mostly just here to check on my pumpkins. I had never grown them before. Also gotta breed the chickens. All 10,000 of them. I asked Tors and Elbaton if they wanted anything. They said they were good. All I did, literally all I did day 144 was farm. I have so much farmland, it literally takes that long. However, my hard work paid off the very next day. I had 45 emeralds and went on a shopping spree at the cleric. Now that I have 12 eye of enders, I should be able to find the end fortress, but the sun isn't that high in the sky, so I should probably try tomorrow. And that's exactly what I did in day 146. I rode out into the great unknown, looking for the end. I found another town in a spruce forest and quickly stole all of their property. I rode all day and didn't find anything. It was dumb of me to think this was gonna be easy. And since I can't sleep, I just packed up in a tiny little shack and stood there all night, like a normal person. And on day 147, thanks to my eye of ender, I was right above the ender portal. I'm about 2,000 blocks from the main camp, so I decided to make my own little dirt shack over here until I found the end. I've gotta dig through an entire mountain though, so this is gonna be a little difficult. Technically, early on day 148, I found the end portal, and the first step was to build a convenient ladder right to it. It took all day, but now I can go straight from my dirt shack to the end. And now I'm home, huh. I used my compass and wasn't recording. Anyway, now I know exactly where the end of the game is so I can truly focus on preparing for the Ender Dragon. I've never killed the dragon before, especially on hardcore. So I'm gonna grab everything I could possibly need for this fight. The chickens were for feathers, this gravel is for flint. There's so many different things, it's gonna take a while. Yeah, it's gonna take a while, but it's also gonna require some serious resources. So on day 150, I went back to farming. I feel like that's pretty much all I do. And then right before bed, I gave my horse a golden carrot for no reason at all. I will be moving between these 
these two towns though, so on day 151 I constructed a tunnel and horse road between the two. It really didn't take that long, basically about half a day and I was done. The whole road is essentially three arches. Very simple. Only for a horse. Maybe for a guy in daytime if I forgot something. And at night I burned down the forest to make room for my road. I'm sure the local townspeople won't mind. The next morning I discovered a large cave right next to the horse road. I didn't explore it or anything, just covered it up like all my problems. Yeah, I essentially spent the entire day fixing little problems that no one would notice but me. Also, my cleric isn't selling me ender pearls, and I have no idea why. I'm not an expert at this stuff. Whatever, I'll figure it out tomorrow. Tonight, I'm sleeping in the castle. Hey, look at me, clearing trees again on day 153. That must mean I'm up to something. It is another road. There are many like it, but this one will definitely be the longest. For now, I did the math, and if I extend this road 2,000 blocks in one direction, it will lead exactly to where my ender portal is. I'm setting up a hard supply line for not only the ender dragon, but also all the things that come after the ender dragon. If you guys want to see 300 days, and I know you probably do, this road has to exist. And you know it's going to take a little bit, but honestly it might be the most important thing I've built this entire series. Don't worry, the plan isn't to have one long section of road that would obviously just take tons of materials, it's kind of going to be in little strips. This is probably the most desirable section of it. I was just lucky to have this tree there. This is a road that probably will never look nice, and I'm okay with that. I just love the idea that I could maybe one day cleanly go from my main compound, like the starting one, all the way to the end, easily by a road. But I almost immediately ran into the problem of mountains. And in my opinion, I think in this scenario, it's a little bit easier to just tunnel on through. So yeah, we just added more work. <laughs> but like I said earlier, this tunnel is probably the most important work of my entire life, Minecraft or otherwise. And hey, it may have been a tiny bit faster if I did this whole thing across across flat ground, but honestly the tunnel's probably a little safer. But I may have to start sleeping inside of the tunnel now. Running back home took quite a while. Day 157 is mostly what you see here, just mining away at some rock. If anything, it made the construction process a little mindless, which is good when you're going 2,000 blocks. Now the absolute best feeling was when I got a big chunk of dirt and I could just zap right through with my enchanted diamond shovel. You gotta find some way to entertain yourself when all you do is mine. Oh yeah, I don't know about you guys, but I sleep great in this drafty tunnel. The only rare thing I ever ended up finding to break up the monotony was coal. And I'm telling you, they felt like diamonds. And by the end of day 160, I had broken through to a swamp, so no more tunneling, at least for now. Oh no, we're not done yet, there's still about 700 blocks to go. Again, the plans for this road were gonna change on the fly, I didn't really know exactly what terrain I was gonna be crossing. Right now, we're going over a swamp. Though I did get a ton done today, as you can see, this road is pretty long now. I only had to place one block at a time. Yeah, that was nice while it lasted, but now we're back to a hilly region. The end portal's in a mountain, remember? I am getting really close though. That narrow, dangerous section over the water really helped. Though if my map is correct on the morning of day 163. I was right by the end portal. I mean, gotta build a bridge over this ravine first, but I'm almost there. Hey look, just as I remember it, the terrible little dirt shack. But before I do anything, I want to finish up that little last section right up to the shack. And that's it. I've connected my main compound that I spawned at for day one all the way to a shack in the end portal. I've come a long way in 163 days. Day 164, I took the road back, and even just to get to that second villager town, it still takes over half a day. But now I can run supplies safely between my main compound and the end portal so I can set myself up for the ender dragon and what comes after it. Speaking of supplies, now it's time to do my favorite thing. No, actually the favorite thing happened on day 165. I spent most of the day looking up what I needed to kill the ender dragon, so I had to go to bed early. All right, I have a confession. I've played Minecraft for like 10 years and I've never brewed a potion. Never not once. You can generally find some helpful tips on YouTube if you can get past the terrible dubstep intros. I don't want to explain it, because I still don't totally understand it, and I'll probably have to look it up again when I have to make more potions. But I was able to learn the brewing process, and by the end of the day, had upgraded potions of slow falling. I also set aside a designated chest for everything I'm going to take into the end portal. I'm gonna go as full kit as possible. I was just busy all day learning new things. Time got away from me, and I had to go to bed. Then on day 167, I wasted no time and took my horse road back to the second far villager town. Oh, and I farmed along the way. Gotta pay my mortgage. The cleric still isn't selling me ender pearls. I have no idea why. I even moved him into my own house. I thought maybe he was feuding with the other guy. Well, listen, buddy, we're gonna figure this one out the easy way or the starvy way. Day 168 is mostly gonna be about preparation. Tomorrow's a big one. I mostly just worked on some of the other villagers. Here I'm leveling up the butcher. I really wasn't sure what the villagers were gonna give me at max level, but in my experience, if you get them to master, there's always something that's worth your while. I also started then completed construction of a large L right outside the town. The cleric still wasn't selling me anything, but I went to bed excited because now it's day 169. And to start it off, I decided I was going to ride my see-through horse. Oh, it's very slow. 
Almost like it's the ghost of my first horse. All right, now you know what I'll really be doing. I also had to brew a second diamond sword. Yeah, that's right, two diamond swords. I need one with sharpness. My current one has smite, and that won't help me with the ender dragon. Though I got a little greedy, and as soon as I saw looting two, I clicked enchant. This thing won't help me for the ender dragon, but it's still a useful sword. I gotta go to bed early though. I gotta check on my cleric in the morning. I miss him. It took a very long time to get back to L-Town. I hope you all know I paid for that see-through horse joke. Hey, what do you know? Doing absolutely nothing. Didn't fix a thing. So most of the footage is me just standing still while I look up what is wrong with you? It's probably because the brewing stand wasn't on the floor, but then when I tried to move it, he got out. This is just becoming a day. All right, hopefully that works. I won't know until tomorrow. I'm getting very close to killing him. Village security gave me this diamond sword and told me to use it on anyone that looks suspicious. I basically just bummed around in the town a little bit until my cleric would sell me some ender pearls. Nice, I fixed him. And by the end of the day, I was going back into the nether. Woohoo! I needed more blaze rods. Luckily, I built a blaze spawner. It's not the most efficient, and it's a little bit dangerous, but like I said earlier, I've got pretty good armor for this. Maybe one day, if I get some talent, I can turn this into a proper blaze farm. But for now, I'm just slapping these guys with my diamond sword until they die. I mean, even if you look at my health, I'm not taking that much damage. And by the end of what my soul perceived as day 172, I had 24 blaze rods, and that's enough for me. The next day, day 173, I worked on getting some flint to make some arrows. My ancestors recommend about four stacks. And I was also able to get that diamond sword with sharpness, which will really help for the ender dragon. It's not perfect. Fire doesn't help me at all, but it's fine. I did quite a few chores on day 174. It's fine, I don't even really mind. I also noticed that my master level cleric would give me one emerald for eight glass bottles, and that's a pretty good deal. For this trade, the math works out that eight blocks of sand equals one emerald, and that's insane. I told you about these master level villagers. They can turn some serious profits. It's just nice to be able to work on multiple money-making methods throughout the day. You know, while I'm farming up this sand, I'm making money, but my crops are also growing, which makes me more money. And I never thought digging up some sand with a shovel could get complicated, but you know, by the end of day 175, I had pretty much mastered it. Oh yeah, you feel that blood in your nose? That's the smell of industry. I got a little supply hungry on day 176, but I was finding a good amount of clay, which I can use to make some dandy looking brick. And of course, the sand turns a massive profit, so I'm going for that too. I'm gonna use this sand to get emeralds from the cleric, and eventually, I'll own the entire town. Then the real profits begin. By the end of the day, I couldn't even sell all the glass bottles that I made. I netted 12 emeralds, and then he ran out of stock. I already had a lot of money, but on day 177, I farmed and made even more. I mean, I need a lot of money though. There's a lot of villagers that I haven't even begun to upgrade like this weaponsmith. But the newly installed Fletcher might just be the best one yet. He can sell me arrows, bows, all kinds of stuff. You know, for a couple emeralds, he got me almost three stacks of arrows and saved a lot of chickens' lives. The rest of the day was just spent looking at the weird stuff some of these villagers want, like dried kelp blocks. Huh. Day 178, I noticed my butcher wanted some mutton, and I happened to know a whole family of mutton. I had quite a lot of sheep, though. If you'll believe it, this is the flock after I killed 64 of them. I think I might have killed too many cows, though. Whoops. After that excruciatingly painful day, I went to bed early, but didn't sleep at all because of the nightmares. My endgame chest is definitely starting to look good, though, on day 179. However, I'm a little addicted to these villagers, so I got a little sidetracked. I got my shepherd to master, which is pretty useless. He just sells you paintings, but that's not terrible, I guess. Didn't really do anything else. Oh, and a zombie got in. I'm not sure how, but he's dead now. I know I already said I got my shepherd to master, but I have this other shepherd that I'm trying to rebrand. It took a long time, but at least I locked him in, which is pretty much the hardest part. Yeah, it was already night by the time I put down his brand new stone cutter. Oh, and zombies are still getting in. Why? Sometimes this works right away, sometimes it takes a while, and sometimes it doesn't work at all. Whatever, I had a little bit of fun on day 181. I had 24 paintings and created my national museum of art. I'm also gonna expand that L. I know I called it L Town in passing earlier, but that wasn't official. What's better than an L, you ask? Huh, maybe an LTN. Not bad, huh? The morning of day 182, I started by cleaning up the front entrance to this town. Remember, kids, care about your appearance. Everyone cares what you look like. There was also a small hill in front of the LTN that I deleted to make the view better. There was quite a lot of sand at the front entrance, and that's actually profitable for me, so I replaced it with dirt. Sure, it's not perfect, but it looks a bit nicer, and it's definitely safer. I was proud of all the improvements I made. It definitely looks better, especially at night. So I just stood on top of this hay bale and clonked zombies all night. After a quick morning of farming and consuming, on day 183, I went back to the first villager town. You know, that town that was pretty cool, but then I forgot about it completely when I found a cooler town. There is one good thing about this town. I've got a toolsmith that I leveled up to master, so I can buy 
diamond tools from him. Yeah, but then later I almost totally lit my house on fire, which would have been bad. It's made of mostly wood. That was pretty much all I wanted to do that day, but I ended up getting a pretty nice shot of this town's skyline. Day 184, I realized there's no way these townsfolk will recognize my greatness unless I build a throne. You might be sitting there at home thinking that I'm just stalling fighting the Ender Dragon, and you're right, but at least I'm being creative about it. Sorry, local businesses. Looks like your land belongs to me now. Like any good throne of an oppressor, this one needs to have fire. You know, if that doesn't hold up my authority, I don't know what will. Oh, and you gotta know it's really, really comfy. Yeah, even from over here, I feel very oppressed. You know what's weird? Day 185, I realized one of my blank villagers became a stonemason. Whatever this works, I guess. I wanted one because they'll sell you fancy stone, like these bricks or chiseled stuff. Yeah, I'm so rich I went all the way from novice to master in one day and he'll sell me blocks of polished quartz so I can get real fancy. So at night, I left on the long road to my end shack to polish it up a little bit. This area is pretty embarrassing. All there is is a dirt shack and a ladder all the way to the end. I really like using bricks, so you have to understand I was having a ton of fun with this. I go through those pillars to get to the end. It looks pretty cool, right? I don't know. I think it is. I also carved out a pretty uninteresting basement. This is where I'll make room for some storage and maybe a bed. And by the end of the day, it was mostly done, but I still got a few more things to do. I dismantled the good old dirt shack on day 187. It served us well, and we will always remember him. And then the rest of the day was just spent making the end shack look nicer. And I think I did a pretty good job. Fire always helps. Then by the end of the day, we had a respectable base that looked nice and had a bed in the basement, which is all I really need. But I still need a few more things before I fight the ender dragon. And one is iron. Diamonds would help too. Honestly, I didn't really find much. Like two iron, definitely no diamonds. A lot of coal though. I'll be sleeping here for the night, but I'll definitely have to get back to my diamond mine. Well, I guess checking the ravine won't hurt. I was very careful. Mostly just tunneled through the side of the ravine and used math to find the iron. I'm gonna raise an army of iron golems to fight the ender dragon, so I'm gonna need this iron. It really wasn't that dangerous, especially since it was the daytime, and my smite sword makes these zombies die in one hit. I left with a ton of daylight and 56 iron, so it was totally worth my time. All right, it's the last 10 days. We're fighting the ender boy on day 200, so let's settle our affairs. You can tell I got right to mining. Still gotta find that iron, maybe some diamonds too. I happen to have a villager that'll buy my smooth stone, so I'm actually profiting the whole time I'm mining down here. And I've got a fortune pickaxe, which can multiply my diamonds, so I got a ton pretty fast. By the end of the day, I had 32 diamonds, but it didn't feel like I had nearly as much iron. Now I'm back in the main camp, consolidating some of my rarest items into stuff that'll help me fight the ender dragon. This is the first time I had ever built an ender chest. You can't even really use them unless you have a silk touch pickaxe like my boy Tim here. It's essentially an extended inventory that you can use in emergencies, so this is gonna be perfect for the ender dragon. The rest of the day, I just got organized. With how I keep my chests, it took a while. The entirety of day 192 was spent brewing potions. I filled up my ender chest with all the potions I was gonna take, so now I gotta make duplicates. It took all day, but I also messed around a little. I made a water breathing potion here. Anyway, I'm going back to VT1 at night. Yeah, for day 193, this is pretty much the only frame I have to show you. And you know it was a good one. The next day, I found a real skeleton spawner, though. This is awesome. I can convert this. I even took the time to open up my ender chest, grab my silk touch pickaxe, Tim, and mine the spawner. But it didn't work. I was so sad. Then day 195, I pretty much just got lost in a cave. But at least there were resources down there. I've got a surplus on diamonds, redstone, pretty much everything I need. But iron is so scarce right now. I don't know how. I know I said I was lost, but I just waited until the sun was high in the sky and then followed my compass home. Ha <laughs> ha! I knew this bridge would have a point one day. I spent the rest of the night frantically rummaging through all my treasures. I'm spending day 196 trying to get the absolute perfect enchants. I'm trying to get a hold of some anti-fall damage boots. My forefathers have highly recommended them. I'm sorry, chickens. I'm just gonna need a little more XP. Well, I didn't get the perfect enchantment, but I got protection three, which will help at least a little. I also would have really liked an infinity bow. That's another enchantment, but I guess four stacks of arrows will work just as good. Hey, and look at me. I'm taking my horse road as a people road. Good thing I put in those safety features. Day 197, I spent all day moving mountains of stone between the villagers. I was getting so rich, I had to put a sizable amount of my money in blocks. This village probably, no, it definitely saved me. I don't know what I would do without this village. No way I'd be this prepped for the ender fight. It's not over yet though. I feel I've only scratched the surface. This world is pretty massive. I kind of just loitered around the town all day looking for little things I needed to fix. I really care about this place. But as you can tell, I'm getting my inventory pretty cleaned out. It's almost time. I purposely set aside day 199 to be all about prep. I wanted to make sure I got this right, so I took a full day. I checked and then double checked and then checked a third time just to make sure I had everything I needed. And I'm just gonna freeze frame it here. This is everything I'm taking in, my inventory and my ender chest on top.
laptop. I was pretty certain I didn't forget a single thing. And by the end of day 199, I'm ready. At least ready as I'll ever be. And I woke up early on day 200 and checked my inventory for the 10th time. It was definitely a lot of work to get here. I mean, you just watched it. But when that end portal opened up, it was all worth it. Though when I tried to get a closer look, I accidentally fell in. Judge me if you will, but I'm going with the very simple strategy of putting a pumpkin on my head. I'll show you why in a sec. I know it's a little hard to see, but there are a bunch of Endermen in the Ender Dragon fight. And if I looked at any of them without this pumpkin mask, they'd attack me. The pumpkin head allows me to disregard the Endermen and worry most about the Ender Dragon. First step is destroying the crystals on top of these obsidian pylons, and you always want to start with the two that have iron cages. Of course, it's pretty dangerous to go up this high, but because you have that potion of slow falling, once you destroy that thing, you can just jump off. The rest of the crystals can be easily handled with an arrow shot if you're good. I brought extra ender pearls because you can teleport with them, and with the potion of slow falling, there's really no chance of death, but honestly, they weren't that easy to use. Anyway, once you destroy all that stuff, he'll land in the middle, and this is where the easiest part of the fight comes along. All you gotta do is go behind him and hit his tail repeatedly. It's really not hard. You can also shoot him in the air, which was pretty easy. This game is for children. Just always remember to redose on your potion of slow falling. Here for about 20 seconds I wasn't covered. But that doesn't matter as now I've successfully killed the ender dragon. It really wasn't that hard. I definitely had enough gear for it. If I died it would have been over. So I had to put every little bit of focus into this fight. And it turned out perfectly. I went from level 29 to level 69 and got myself a dragon egg. It was definitely a good day. But you see that thing in the distance there? That's what we're doing next. So make sure you subscribe so you don't miss the next one. And as always, stay notable.